What's up everyone? Damn boys back at it. So what I want to do here is highlight my favorite Rundy and my favorite Pasty that I've seen so far in the tournament. Now, shocking, Mills Pasty, definitely my favorite Pasty. Uh, I wonder why, right? I send seven, he was sending seven. So it was something I really enjoyed watching, so I really wanted to highlight that. Uh, then we're going to talk a little bit about Young Kiv's run defense in the follow-up to this. So without further ado, let's go on ahead and get right into uh, my favorite pass D from the tournament. It's going to be Mills, 3-4 Bear. Pinch buck zero is the play. Now what he's doing is it's real simple. That's, that's the thing about this, really, where maybe you have an advantage. This is a super simple blitz setup, so it gives you more time for your shell, and you know it's, it's about as easy as it gets. You blitz all linebackers, you press. Now you saw these guys kind of slid in when I pressed. Sometimes you may need to press. You want him to come into two. So sometimes you might have to press twice. Uh, if you do it fast, typically they'll all come in. But if you'll notice, Mills always has it set up to where these two guys have each taken one step in. So look for that. His bunch defense was very, very simple. He's just going to take B, put him on an outside third, take Y, put him on an inside third, X. That's a bit of a wild card. So, if you're looking to play some match principles, maybe you think there could be a post coming, a corner route coming, something like that. Or, if you're worried about the running back leaking out in the backfield, you might just play another outside third, where you're vulnerable there as a straight go route. Well, he's basically saying, try me. You know, I'm going to have very fast corners. We'll see if you have enough time, right? If you're super worried about the go route, you know, but maybe still the running back, then maybe you play a quarter, right? You're not going to get the match principles, though. So if it's post or flag route, you're going to get chopped up that way. Uh, if you're worried about a quick slant, maybe... Uh, he would put him in a squat, right? Because the squat is still responsible to the running back if the running back breaks out in the flat. So essentially what you're doing is you're trying to take away that whole side of the field with one defender, take away two with one, and then he's really just trying to kind of compress over here and make this real tough on you, and you're going to have to make a quick read in traffic because he's going to come over and compress this area. Uh, if it was a two-by-two two set, the deep third was standing right about here, the deep middle third. You know, and then maybe he would be using this guy. The problem with that and where he struggled is then up these seams, it was a lot to cover. Uh, and Drini kind of showed that a bit and gave him a little bit of hell. But yeah, then he'd just kind of come in and stand in a gap like so. Now, if you don't have any blocking adjustments, you just max pro. You know, you're just going to straight get screamed at. Right? Now, Kiv wasn't actually getting screamed at. He's not dumb. You could tell he labbed for this, right? So what he was doing is he would go slide strong side, slide the blocking strong side, and go ahead and mic the opposite rusher. Well, what you'll notice is that we'll pick it up initially. So... Mills is still relying on having good shed players, you know, Frank Clark uh, with power uh, specialist, obviously the glitch, pretty much everyone's doing that now, uh, you know, that, so he, note that, you, you know, you still, if you set it up like this, will need to rely on shed a little bit, so you can't just, you know, really cheap out on the, the defensive line and, uh, and do this, so, again, you'll see with the proper blocking and protection, <laughs> that time. So nothing's 100%. But I'll show you again and it'll probably pick it up, right? Most of the time it's going to pick it up. Most of the time. So again, we max pro, we slide strong side. We go ahead and mic him up. Boom. But you see how that, again, now then that third jumped off of his guy. And, the, like, the way these guys match up and kind of mix things up on the back end, it gets to be really tough with all the little match principles that go into a shell like that. That's why you see so many guys just creating a 3D shell and blitzing. And there you go. And there's your defense, right? Uh, it's really why it's so common. That's the perfect example. 
Uh, so again, we blitz all linebackers. We go ahead and press. Press twice to get the other guy in, in this instance. So here is something that I personally am adding to this, and I'm sure he does this sometimes. I didn't really see it in the Madden Bowl, but this is just something where I, when I get sick of dealing or having to rely on Shed, I'm going to go ahead and send another guy. Typically, I'll send him off of an edge if I'm worried about a rollout. So if I'm worried about him trying to roll out weak side on me here, I would do it like this, and maybe I'll come stand in the gap. I don't care what you want to do from a blocking standpoint. We can set up that same formula. You're outgunned. You just don't have enough guys, and you're fixing to get screamed at, period. Now, that you as the user are responsible for the entire middle of the field, but not for long. Okay, so if there's two routes going over the middle of the field, just play it safe, take the deeper of the two, and if you need to work back, work back, but understand that they are, you, well, you saw how much time they're going to have to make that read. Not much. Not much. Um, so again, blitz all linebackers. Press, had to double press that time. You could take Heath and blitz him over here on bunch side if you're worried about him rolling bunch side. Again, take and set up the blocking stuff. Doesn't matter. You're short. You know, you're short blockers. Doesn't matter. Uh, that was about as well as things could go. They gummed it up, and the pressure had to come in the inside. Um, those are my two favorite ways to do it. But you could, I suppose, if you really wanted. I don't recommend it because uh, it's a little finicky. And then he's off the line. I suppose you could do something like that if you really wanted. I would rather send it off the side. I think that's significantly better. Uh, where this defense is weak is going to be if they can hit you with, uh, get on the edge with a run. So this is what you need to worry about. You're going to have to kind of watch outside there. So I'm, I'm going to go back and show the replay. Obviously, they got there off the backside that time. Uh, but this isn't a great run formation either. right? I just want you to see the lanes that are typically going to come open if someone runs to the edge. You've got right there. You're going to have an issue in this gap. And you're going to have an issue outside. So those are going to be your two real weak issues. So what you're going to have to do as a user is you almost have to just go and stand in that gap and freeze. And just wait for him to make a decision. So you see, I just kind of sat there. And I'm like, okay, well, which way you want to go? And I'm just going to, you know, fire one gap or the other. Uh, and hope that you don't get smeared. You can see I'm about to. <laughs> so then you could have cut back, right? You see where there's a potential issue there. Um, I got a little bit out of position. You should probably just stand directly in the hole. But that's how that's going to look, uh, and that's why you did not see him use that really as a run defense when he was worried, uh, like Dreeny, when he was in run formations, he had to come out of it. And then you just saw him go into the 3-4 uh, odd and start to use things that looked an awful lot like my Send 7 setups in 3-4. If you're curious about that, go check that out. Uh, I will be updating that scheme with the 3-4 pinch, shed, and blitz. I already did the blitz, so just go back and watch. My last video was about the pinch 3-4, and I only showed that as a blitz in that video, but now we've seen throughout the Madden Bowl that pinch 3-4 also be used for Rundy. Uh, I was labbing the shed stuff as well. Uh, after they did the last update uh, to stop the firing gaps, was it like 2-4-5 against run? Uh, 3-4 became a little easier to pick up when you're sending 7. Slide your line to the right, away from your running back. Tip, slide your line away from your running back. Watch the running back chop the end, or the outside linebacker. That's it. Uh, but it did become a much better shed defense uh, when you set it up properly. All right, guys, that's going to go ahead and wrap up our Mills 3-4 Bear defense. Be on the lookout tomorrow. I'll have the Young Kiv Rundy coming out as well. As always, like, comment, subscribe. Head on over to Facebook. Check us out. Madden Genius is the group. Damn Boys 22 is the page. As always, appreciate that support on that road to 1,000 subscribers. Peace.